One of the reasons I prefer physics over the other sciences is because you don't need to remember a huge amount of facts. It's all about how you apply just a little bit of knowledge. So when it comes to calculation questions in your exams, well, everything's already there. You don't really have to remember anything. So in theory, you should get all of those marks, but sometimes it's a little bit tricky to remember how to do calculations properly. So let me teach you. So here's the question we're gonna use. A 50 gram ball drops from rest and it falls eight meters to the ground. At what speed does it hit the ground? First thing we do, number one, we write down the data we've been given in the question. So what have we been told? We've been told the mass of the ball is 50 grams. And we've been told the height that it falls, eight meters. But also write down what we're being asked to find. We're being asked to find the speed. What's the symbol for speed? Well, it's V because it's basically velocity. So we're gonna put a question mark there for that. And that's very important because that makes the next step a lot easier. You might have to infer some information as well. What do I mean by that? Well, sometimes the question might have a number in it, but it doesn't actually tell you the number. For example, here we're told that the object falls from rest. What does that mean? That means that the speed of the object is zero to begin with. And it's a good idea to convert units too. Whenever you do calculations, it's only meters, amps, volts. It's not kilovolts, it's not kilometers that go into your calculation. Just remember that the only exception to that is kilograms. Kilograms is what goes into a calculation, not grams. And so that means we must convert this into kilograms. Remember if you're going, remember if you're going to a bigger unit, then you need to divide by the conversion factor. So we divide by a thousand here. We know we want fewer kilograms than grams. Step two, figure out what the question is about. Is it about forces or energy or electricity? It could be more than one of these. Here we're talking about something that starts off high and force. And you should know that that therefore is about energy. What do we know about energy? Energy is always conserved. And that should help us in the next bit then. Step three, find the equation with these variables in. Now this is the great thing is that you'll be given a formula sheet so you don't even have to remember the equations and you're given them in symbol form. So I always say that it's worth writing them down in symbol form. We've already used symbols up here anyway. Sometimes it might have to be two equations, not one. So just be careful there. And that is true in this case. We don't have an equation that has M, H and V in. But because we figured out that the question is to do with energy, well, we know that we're gonna to have to use our equation for gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy. So I'm gonna say EP for potential energy and EK for kinetic energy. And that's equal to half times mass times V squared, half MV squared. Now, in any question to do with things falling, you'll always be told what they want G to be, gravitational field strength. More often than not, they'll say that it's just 10 or if or not, they'll just say 10. But it might be 9.8 as well, but you'll always be told that. We've written our equations down. It's really important that you do that. And now we need to figure out, do we need to rearrange these? Well, what do we have? We have M, we have H, we have G, and we're trying to find V. So we can't really use the kinetic energy equation yet, can we? But let's figure out what the GPE is. So GPE, or I've just written EP for short, it's really important then that you write the equation with the numbers in. So 0 0.05 times 10 times eight. Now don't be lazy and skip this step. It's important that you write down what calculation you're actually doing because if you get the answer wrong at the end, then you'll miss out on marks for workings. And popping that into my calculator, that gives us a gravitational potential energy of four joules. Great. We now have our GPE and we know that if something falls, then its GPE is turned into KE. So that means that if it had four joules of GPU at the top, it now has four joules of K at the bottom. So now we need to rearrange this equation. Now with an equation with three things in, you can just do an equation triangle. And they're okay, but see if you can get used to rearranging equations properly. What do we want to make the subject? We wanna make V the subject. And the trick is to move things from one side of an equation to the other, we do the opposite with them. So I'm gonna write it out again, but I'm just gonna drop the K there. So E is equal to half, um, v squared, they're all multiplied, aren't they? Let's get rid of the half first. Well, to get rid of times a half, we need to divide by a half. What's that the same as? That's the same as multiplying by two. There we go, two times the energy equals mv squared. And then we need to get rid of the m to the other side as well. Let me write it out again. I'm just gonna say two e, two times the energy is equal to mv squared. So get rid of the times m, we divide by it. 
on the other side. We do the opposite. We're not quite done because we just want V, we don't want V squared. So to undo this, we square root the whole thing. Now you can write down the equation. Now the final step, write down the calculation and punch it into your calculator. So we're gonna write down V is equal to the square root of two times the energy, what was that, four joules, divided by the mass, 0 0.05. That gives me an answer of 12 point, well, 6491, but we should round. The rule of thumb is three significant figures. So in this case, this would just be 12.6. So we're just gonna round it to that. You could instead replace the symbols in the equation with numbers and then rearrange, and you'll end up with the same answer, but doing it this way is better. You might see there is a shortcut in this question, but I've gone round the houses to show you how to do it properly. I've also done a video specifically on how to do any electricity calculation. Check it out. Leave a like if this has been helpful, and I'll see you in the next video.